We are here at Grant Larson Productions with Black and Ginger team member, Mary Rose, mm -hmm. who's the lead scenic painter and prop fabricator. And she's here to talk a little bit about texture and creating texture. So what am I looking at? You're looking at some examples of some textures that I've done that people have asked for on sets. So we have wood, marble, stone, cement, and then we have rust. I mean, these were all just blank white pieces of drywall. And then I usually do a base coat. So these are all done in the same tones, just a white and a black. And then I have also a white and a black wash that are that's in these spray bottles along with water. So I'll do the base coat and then I'll usually just through using a rag and again, these spray bottles set on the mist setting. While it's wet, I'll just end up spraying on top of this and then maybe using the rag to kind of dab certain areas and then that's usually good to go. This was a little more, a little more technical just because I had to get the shapes all out. Uh, the wood, this had a base coat of like a taupey or brown. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's different types of wood but the technique for me would always kind of be very similar or the same. It's just the use of the colors that really kind of differentiate walnut from say pine. And then the rust through the use of different shades of reds and browns and even yellows and oranges, you can do different variations and levels of rust. So just building up various base coats of colors. So when you're creating a set, when you're working on a production and someone says, we're gonna be in a house, what's the next step when you're trying to figure out what texture you're gonna create for? I would probably ask questions. What's the setting? Is it clean? Is it distressed? And depending on their answers, I say, okay, well, it's, you know, maybe it hasn't been cleaned in 10 years or so. So we're gonna have some mold and we're gonna have maybe some buildup in the corners and some cracks and maybe been that way for 25 years, the mold and the levels would just be a bit higher. So it's, it's just all about how much they want. Can you show us a little bit of some other work that you've done just so we really understand what distressing means? Of course, I have one other item here to show you. So this is something that was for film. They had something already done and then I just needed to replicate it for a prop. So when the creatives came to you and they said, we want a pale helmet bucket head, what did they say to get you to understand that they wanted something of this type of distressing? Well, I just asked like, hey, do you guys want it distressed? And to what degree do you want it to be distressed? Because if they wanted to take this further, I would maybe bash it in a little bit, burn some areas, you know, so there's just a degree, but if they're like, oh, we just want a light distressing or maybe a medium distressing, then I'm like, okay, well, I'll usually do it and then present it to them. And if they think it's not enough, I'll do more. If they think it's too much, then I can always take a wet rag and kind of, I can bring it back a little bit, so. Any other tips that you would recommend to people out there who are trying to figure out what kind of texture they're looking for or the best tool or describer that they can use to help you figure out what they're looking for? Google is really helpful. So if you just go into Google and you just type in granite countertops or marble countertops, cement textures, just find one that you like, that you think works, give it to your scenic and they'll just do their best to replicate it. So I'm gonna take that as communication is really helpful uh, and just any examples, show it to us, show it to Mary. And then also to have patience to see what you've created and see how you go because it's a process mm -hmm. and know you can add, modify, and find the right look so that mm -hmm. we're all happy. Mary, that was awesome. Thank you for helping us understand more about textures. I'm looking forward to learning more about scenic painting and everything else. Of course. Check us out and wait for the next one. We'll got more savvy tips for you.